Lil Baby could post a video and reach 24 million people, he could charge like $1.2 million and never work again. Yeah, but now you cut me out. And I huh? need my money. Right. Instagram's like, well, we got to eat, so we got to smush you down to force Target and Walmart to run ads with us and not with you. That's the, the fix. So, okay, cool. So Lil Baby not only has 23.5 million followers, he can't even reach them. But let's monetize his fan base. Because this is what I say about fan base. Buried within your following on social media is a small group of people that really support you and want to see you win. I say this around 3 to 5%, right? But I'm going to go on a high side and say 5%. So I'm going to do some math for you and tell me that 5% of Little Baby's following is 1,175,000 people. That's his fan base. Those are the people that buy Little Baby albums, go to his concerts. He a platinum artist. That's him, right? If Little Baby says, all right, cool, I'm going to take my life on fan base and put stuff, I'm going to still give you all the free stuff that I do on Instagram because I can do that on fan base, but I'm going to do audio rooms with virtual meet and greets. I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to do a, 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 a little concert that nobody else can see. I'm going to post photos and videos of me working in the studio. I'm going to do a reality show about going on tour. And I'm going to charge $9.99 a month. And I'm going to give little baby $7 of that $9.99 a month. Guess what that is? Mm. $8.2 million a month. $98 million a year. Yo, this video is sponsored by Los Hermanos, and it's crazy because I always wanted to have a uh, tequila sponsorship. So shout out to my guys over at Los Hermanos for taking a shot with me, doing this partnership thing. I really appreciate it. Listen, I like it so much, I might just be worse than uh, Rick Ross, bro. So if you see me on the gram posting it all over my story and my gram, don't say nothing. Just go ahead and buy a bottle. I got it by the case. So look, we got the Blanco. We also got the Repo. And you know, my favorite is in Yeho, right? We got it on the way, you know. Like I said, we got it by the case, man. So listen, if you in Delaware, you in Georgia, you in Maryland, you in New York, you in Jersey, make sure you go to the nearest liquor store and ask for some Los Hermanos. Hey, my guys. Yo, what's up, man? Y'all know what time it is, Mr. J. Hill, J. Hill Podcast. We here. Uh, man, I don't even know how to introduce this guy. I mean, a little bit of everything. Uh, I mean, music producer. Yep. <sighs> The son of a legend. That you know now. <laughs> Owner and creator of fan base. Yes. I mean, this guy right here, this is somebody that you should know. And if you don't know, you about to get to know him. Yep. Shout out to Mr. Isaac Hayes in the building. What up, dog? How you Thank doing, you brother? Thank you very much, man. Thank you for pulling up, man. Thank you for having me, man. This is a wonderful spot. Thank you. I love it, man. Thank I'm, you, brother. I, I, love, I love young entrepreneurship. <sighs> it, I had to... I had to convince myself of loving it. Cause Why? I didn't I didn't want to do it. Why not? A little bit of pride. A really? little, little bit of um look, still pride. A lot of pride then. You know, like you know. Throw pride you, away. Pride is Yeah, but when you're interviewing people like I interview, it's like you don't want them to pull up to this. Bruh. It looked good though. They don't know. It's a, it's, it's, <laughs> they don't it, know. It, it, you. This is a. This is a media. You're building a media empire. Mm. You can do it from a cell phone now. Facts. And you could do it. In, in, you could do. You could do these in a car. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, can we have some fun a little bit real quick? Sure. Joe Button says something. Yeah. On his podcast, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you answered the question. Well, okay. or I, it wasn't a question, uh -huh. but he said something. But I don't know if you ever said yes or no. Okay. I think he said, I know Isaac Hayes be getting pussy off of his father's name. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was hilarious. No, I don't. Why not? I never have. No. Nah, I didn't want to. So, okay, first things first, I'm a Gemini. Me too. So Gemini's got egos. Facts. And so I don't want anybody to tell me that I that somebody helped me do something. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when I started producing music, I could have easily been Isaac Hayes the third as a producer, right? Yeah. I'm I had the name Ike Dirty. So I didn't want I didn't want to get into the music industry off the name of my father. I wanted people to to buy my records, you know, rap to my records, sing to my records based off the record and not who my dad was. 
We're going to get the fan base and everything else in a second. Yeah. But boy, if this ain't a conversation already. Yeah, what's up? Why do we do that as black people? That's the, like, Bronny James, right? Yeah. People talk about, is, uh, what is it? Um, nepotism. Yeah. And it's like, bro, that's the point. Like, I work my ass off so my family can reap the benefits. 100%. I don't, I don't have a problem with passing down wealth and businesses to your family. So my, and so my, and my dad said, hey, take over the family business. That's one thing. But as an individual that's building something of your own, you still want to feel like you put in the work. And I know Bronny feels the same way. Like, 100%. I, like that's what I'm saying. It's not, he's not in the, he's not like, number one, he, his dad taught him how to play basketball. He saw his dad play basketball. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to make the assumption that the only reason that Bronny James is, is on a team is because his dad is LeBron James. I won't, I won't do that. I'll, I'll still say that the opportunity to play at the level that he can play at, because you can always get, improve and get better. Mm-hmm. And so, he already, he already, in my opinion, when he did the combine, I think he came in like second mm. out of all the people that did the NBA combine. He was scoring, like scoring and like shooting and all this kind of stuff. And so he's going to have the, he has the, people don't understand that he has the pressure and the weight of living up to his dad while trying to play the game of basketball. Mm. LeBron James never had that. Yeah, 100%. He just, I, got to come on the, he just got to come on the court and be nasty from day one with the headband. Facts. I only say that because, like, I feel like we do that in so many places. Like rappers, you hear their sons be like, "Man, nah, I don't want to. I don't want to get help from my dad, or or I don't want him to co-sign me. I want to. I want to make a name for myself." And that's cool, but it's like, bro, the system is in place for you to be able to walk through the door that your dad or your mother opened for you. Okay, so let's let's talk about that. Um, is it better to be on top, or is it better to be in second place? Man, where we come from, I'm learning that second place just might be okay. No, second place is better. Think Here's so? why. I'm going to tell you why. Because there is no competition if you're in first. Ain't nobody chasing you. Mm. you. I mean, you're not chasing nobody. Right. Everybody chasing you. So for Michael Johnson to set records in track and field, Usain Bolt has somebody like, I got to beat that. Yeah. And now these next kids coming up like, I got to beat Usain Bolt. Mm. That's how people improve. So if you are, if you a kid that just or anybody in any type of business that just gets, you know, anointed into the position without having to work for it, you don't really build strength. Mm. Adversity builds character. So it should be hard. It do, I mean, listen, if you want now, there's no problem that if you want to build, you know, a business and generational wealth for your family so they never have to work. But some people want to work. I've always been a worker. Mm-hmm. I've been doing odd jobs and raking leaves and cleaning pools and help people move since I was nine years old. So I've always wanted to make my own money and be my own businessman. So nothing was ever going to get in the way of that. So I don't, like I said, I like, I like where fan base is. I like being in the, the, the underdog position. Cause I, I got my eyes on these other guys. Cause I was, I was like, okay, I can do that. And on top of that, I know that our, our culture creates those ideas. So it's, it's something good to aim for. I like that. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. To, it's okay to be like one to, to build your own and do that, I understand. I, I know some people, some people rest on that. Like, you know, do you know who I am? Do you know who my father is? Like, I'm not one of them. Oh, man, oh. See, I, I was like that, but I'm learning to like just accept the help wherever I can get it. Because I definitely was like, I'm going to make my own name. Like, even when like, I, cr- I cross, I'm a Q or whatever. Mm-hmm. I never really used the fraternity thing to my benefit. Yeah. And I'm thinking about it like, bro, what was I thinking? Why not? Like, it's right there. <laughs> well, that, that, those are dope though. Fraternities. Like I say this, I got a little brother that's going to Morehouse in the fall. Morehouse is a fraternity in itself. Yeah. That's that's how you that's how you get jobs. That's how you like, yo, I know somebody that do you know somebody that's oh man, my kid is sick. Do you know a doctor? Yeah, my doctor's a my doctor's a, a, a in frat. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's the point. And so you you're building you're building community and family with with organizations like that. So I think there's nothing wrong with that. Greeks is that's dope. So so you don't look at the same with getting ass? No. <laughs> hey, that's the whole point. My dad is Isaac Hayes. I mean. <laughs> but what is that? So so, so how does I that. I mean, not now. You're a grown ass man. I'm no, joking. I but, know. But what I'm saying know. is how does that teach me? If I do that, how does that teach me? Okay. So no shade what I'm about to say. But have you ever heard that a lot of like NBA players are not really, they not really like fly or like they kind of corny? I can see that. Because. They're yeah. really good at basketball, 
so they don't have to exercise communication skills. Yeah. You know, some some sort of swile, like what cologne to wear, what restaurant to go to. It's just everything is like money. And As the I kids mean, would say, they don't have no riz. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, right. So so my point is, is like for me, like I wanted to learn the, the art of communication to be an effective communicator. Mm. I used to be terribly shy and afraid to talk to girls when I was like in my like late teens, early 20s. And I snapped out of it and said, no, won't kill you. Mm. And then I wanted to be able to communicate with women because I feel like it's more intimidating to communicate with women than it is to communicate with Fortune 500 companies. When you like a girl, that's a lot more rejection from a woman sometimes can be as men like, dang, man, Shawty just shut me down, right? Mm. So I wanted to be like, yo, I don't ever want to be intimidated by a woman because if I'm not intimidated by women, I'm not intimidated by nobody. Mm. I can okay. talk to I can talk to the I can talk to any, you know, any Fortune 500 CEO, or whatever. I'm not I'm cool because knowing knowing how to talk to women is another level of cool. Mm. And a lot of those guys don't know how to do that. So they're still kind of like uncomfortable, like, yeah, I'm a CEO, but hey, can you that's why they want to hang out with her. That's why all the all the tech dudes want to hang out with all the athletes and entertainers, because they're trying to get the riz. Yeah, they're trying to get, get right. the riz. Right. But if you, if you if you build your own riz. You you, you don't gotta hang out with nobody. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you never use your name to get no ass. We, yeah. we have it. We got it. We got it. I was yeah. just curious. I, I was. I wanted to know that. I, I seen that clip. I'm like, I want to know. Yo, nah, uh, fan base is there. We're gonna talk about it. Yeah. I don't think I've seen this, and I don't know why not. Yo, how was the relationship with you and your pops? How was like? I don't. Th- so my parents, my dad filed for bankruptcy the year before I was born. So he was a very successful singer. Got screwed out of a lot of money. My parents were married two years before I was born. They were married for 14 years. They got divorced when I was like nine. Mm. We moved to Atlanta when I was three. Um, My dad also had other children from previous marriages. So I already came into a big family. I already, like, I got uh, nine other brothers and sisters. Mm. I'm sorry, 10 other brothers, 10 other brothers and sisters. Um, My dad was married four times and had three baby mamas, I think. Mm. So, he was a real Rolling Stone. He was, he was, he was, he was, he was Isaac Hayes, man. He was <laughs> out here doing it in the seventies, you know, so that's seventies, sixties, seventies, and eighties. Um, and so, um, but I really, I wound up having his name being, you know, one of the only boys um, that he had, and so I know that I had this, uh, this, um, a special relationship with him because I was his namesake. Mm. And there's a lot of things my dad taught me, but again, being busy and a man that's trying to rebuild his career when we came to Atlanta, that was tough. Mm. So I didn't always see my dad, but when my parents got divorced, you know, you know, I mean, I don't know people, people's parents get divorced. It was like, all right, you see your dad on holidays or a little, you'll go stay with him for a couple months in the summer. Like that's how my relationship was with my dad. But I always learned so much from him and even these short spurts of time that I would spend together every year, we might have a conversation about the music business. We'll have a conversation about girls and sex. He'd be like, look, man, I always wear a condom. There's some stuff out there that have you come back glowing in the dark. Mm. Like that's how he told me about using protection, you know, stuff like that. So in this deep, deep voice, like, look, man, I'll tell you something, don't, don't go out here. Duh, 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 duh. So um, it was, it was, a, it was a great relationship. I think, um, it just taught me a lot. And it was in, in something else that I say is I think that, and this is something that I think I want people to know that haven't had relationships with their, with their fathers or their mothers. I also think you're a lot more like your parents mm. from the people that they were like genetically without even being around them. Mm, mm, like, mm. unfortunately my dad passed away when my brother, my little brother who is now 18 years old was like two but he has some of my dad's mannerisms, mm. some of his characteristics, laugh, you know, smile. It's just so many things that are just inherited genetically. I think you're more like your parents by who the people they were as opposed to what they teach you. It's literally mm. like you pass that genetic code on. And you can't even help you. it. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. That's crazy. Yo, so you being a producer, right? Mm-hmm. You said you didn't want to use your dad's name, but did you even learn some? Like, how did that happen? Because that seems... You are more like your parents mm-hmm. than what they teach you. Yeah. Was that something that you would say is like genetics? Because well, like ca- you just, bro, you came up, you, you got, you produced some songs with real life celebrities. <laughs> right. Like, but, no, like, so. You so, ain't just like some Joe Smo out here. No, I know. But for me, they kept me in, they kept me around music. So okay. in elementary school, I played the saxophone. In middle school, I played the trombone. In high school, I played trombone and drums. 
And so they kept instruments around me. And then I take I would learn to play piano by hand and stuff like that. And my mom would tell my dad, he's starting to do this. Hey, buy me this keyboard. And then I'd master that. And they buy me this bigger keyboard and I master that. And then it came to the time where when I graduated high school, I left high school early because I I high school wasn't for me. Mm. Like I had enough credits to graduate, so I left in like February of my senior year. I didn't go to prom. I ain't gra- I like I wasn't necessarily connected to my classmates because my mind was always on what is my future. Because I knew I wasn't going to college, and on top of that, that's when a different world was on TV. So you were destined to be a loser if you did not go to college. Mm. Like my mom, my dad, my mom says you're going to be a nobody because you don't have a top college degree. I'm like, damn, I'm out here like yo. So musically, I went and got a nine to five job. My mom would tell my dad, like, yo, he just bought this piece of equipment, X, Y, Z. And then I quit my job. And I think my mom told my dad, like, all right. And then one of my dad's good friends that lived here in Atlanta, he didn't live. He showed up at the house with, like, a whole bunch of old-ass equipment. I'm talking about, like, a mixing board from the 70s, some speakers, tape deck, handed it to me. He went out and got me, like, a couple pieces of equipment, like, musical equipment, and that was it. And then Mm. the rest was history. And yeah. I started learning how to produce records. That was like my college. Those four years from like from like ninety six to like two thousand was like my four years of learning how to produce and make records and learn about the business. So wait, how old were you when your pops passed? Uh, it was two thousand eight, so I'd have been thirty, thirty, thirty three. Wait, hold up. Wait a second. So you was a grown man. Yeah. Yo, how like after your dad moved to Atlanta, he mm-hmm. trying to like revamp his career. You said. What was he going through? Do you remember, like, because even then, he was already who he was. He was already who he was, but but I'm pretty sure to him, it it, it pro- he probably wasn't able to see it. Or oh, I'm curious. What do you mean, like the? He, no, it definitely was a it definitely was a step down. Because you gotta remember, like, Stax Records filed for bankruptcy on my dad like 14 million dollars in this in '74. Mm. If you pull out an inflation calculator, '74. It's like $90 million. Yeah. It's like some crazy, like 60, 80, 90 million dollars in 2024. So imagine like, imagine like an artist like Usher going to label, like, yo, y'all owe me 90 million of royalties. Like, yeah, we ain't got it. And we filed for bankruptcy. Mm. So it was a hit. So then my dad made an album on a new label and it went gold. Had a hit record. We moved to Atlanta, whole new career, whole new thing. So it was a it was a restart, but that still always that that hurt him because he was loyal to a lot of people and they they shit on him. Yo. It's crazy how we all go through the same shit. It's like it just life itself is just recycled over and over again. Cause like yeah. again, so for y'all that don't know, I had a clip that went viral when I was like, I didn't know who Isaac Hayes is. And but funny enough, I asked a few other people, they was like, they didn't know either. Right. And I look back on it and I'm like, yo, after me doing my research, I'm like, yo, this is probably one of the most influential artists of our time. Not even our time, just in music. In music. General in general, yeah, and when I'm talking about influences for what we know, samples, right? A lot of the music that we listen to is sampled by Isaac Hayes' yeah. original music, right? Yeah, and and I'm just like, we talk about legacy, and those are the things that you can't really measure when you hear or you won't know. And I'm and I'm thinking like a man that's moving to Atlanta, your Isaac Hayes, you don't know your was about to happen. Right. Right? But you are you. Oh, yeah. But he's probably still going through things like just everyday person. Like, man, I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to get this money. Yeah. And, like, after me doing my research, you would never think that somebody like that would ever have those thoughts. I mean, every, we're human. Right, yeah. We all going to have, man, please, come on. We all going to have, we all going to have, we're human. Celebrities are human beings. They have, they have um, insecurities. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They have uh, issues, you know what I'm saying? They can get depressed. They can, you know, be afraid a lot, you know what I'm saying? Pride, what we were talking about, like that kind of stuff. So it's it's all possible. I think, I mean, when it comes to the legacy conversation, I think this is an important conversation that we need to have because what I talk about all the time is that black, the gift and the curse of black culture is that we're so innovative we do things and then cast them away and move on. Mm. So I'm going to tell you right now, like we don't uphold black culture. And what I mean by that is this is a simple test. Anybody that ever sees this podcast, right? I want you to do this is a simple test. 
the next time you're in the grocery store or a bookstore, go to the go to the magazine section, right? At all times, you will see one of four people always on a magazine cover. Mm. I promise you. You ready? Babe Ruth, Ronald Reagan, John Wayne, or Elvis Presley. They'll always be on a magazine cover. Because white culture is like, we're going to let you know who our icons were mm. all the time. You'll walk in there and see Judy Garland and Marilyn Monroe and the Beatles. Mm. You don't walk in no. When the last time you walked in the grocery store and saw James Brown on, on a magazine cover or Martin Luther King on a, a magazine cover? You don't. We only put ourselves on the cover when it's like, oh, he got a drug problem or he went to jail or whatever. But they're like, no, nah, these are our icons. Mm. The level of respect and legacy for we have because we just make stuff and then we move on to the next thing. Everything is Everything with black culture is the has been. Right. And I don't have a problem with that because we are the innovators. That's our gift. We just like, OK, it's dope. We make we make hip hop and, and jazz and DJing and, the next. and streetwear and whatever it is, cars. And all right, what's the next? So we just have to have those conversations in our in our culture, in our community that we're going to make sure that we, you know, take Dorothy Dandridge and, and make her an icon just like Marilyn Monroe. You know what I'm saying? Malcolm X and Martin Luther King and and, and these icons, James Brown, Isaac Hayes, Ray Charles, like. These are icons. The innovation conversation. Yeah. I'm back and forth. Did the fan base help you learn that? Because that's something that you can't create mm -hmm. and go to the next. You kind of got to be invested into this thing every day. Like mm -hmm. you can't just create fan base and be like, okay, I created an app onto something else. No, not at all. Because there's, there's, so there's so much that goes into, into building a tech startup. But it's different because t fan base is not only a tech startup, it's a social media platform in an era of social media that's evolving, that's changed. Because, again, I'm, I'm a tech founder, but I can only speak about tech from the lens of social media. So you'll never hear me talk about fintech or, you know, I'm not building no jet engines and, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, all that kind of stuff. So my, my, my foyer into tech came from the culture side because I was looking at what black people were doing. Mm. I just showed you a picture where I said – I said the word IGTV four years before they made it. Yeah. And so that's kind of where my mind was going. Like, yo, I, we need something that like black culture is really the most, you know, valuable culture on the planet. We make, we invent everything. Like I just, I can't remember. I just read something the other day that made me go, it made me, it was something else that we, it was something else that was crazy that we invented. But, but why you, well, I'm, I, cause I want to stay on this. The mm -hmm. innovation conversation though. Yeah. Did that help you understand not or being did that help you be patient with creating something and not throwing it away or you've been already had this idea of like white people or uh we we the only ones that create something and and, and throw yeah, it away Yeah, I've had that. I've been had that. Oh, okay. I was saying cuz cuz I used to see that all the time. I'm like, why are we like like why do we why don't we respect our icons? Like we don't like I'm telling you I'm being a magazine store. I'm like, man, why isn't Essence and Ebony putting like you know what I'm saying? Why are they not putting Sidney Portier on the cover? Like the Sidney Portier issue mm. of all the great things he's done or the Malcolm X issue or the, the Martin Luther King issue. Like, why have they not? Why they ain't do that? Like, mm. we don't, because how are, you, how are you supposed to know about Isaac Hayes if we aren't perpetuating the legacy of Isaac Hayes? Mm. If it wasn't for sampling in South Park, people probably wouldn't know about my dad. Yeah. But Elvis Presley been dead since the 70s. Yeah. And they keep pushing his music his image, his name, his likeness, everything about him, right? And we don't do that. Mm. We got to do that. Damn. You, you own his um, catalog now, right? We, we are slowly collecting and, and, and recapturing copyrights. So it's publishing. So in the music business, there's publishing, there's masters. So we've been slowly recapturing his publishing. Um, the first chunk of publishing we just got back was when he was a songwriter. So my dad was a songwriter. My dad was a musician, and a songwriter before he ever became an artist. He wrote that one song with the two white guys that sing it. What's the, what's the name of the song? What are you talking about? But it's, it's but he did it on these other guys named Sam and Dave. So he wrote, yeah. hold on, I'm coming. Come on, and man. He wrote another, and, he, and he wrote another song called Soul Man. Soul Man, that's so, the one yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah, so Soul Man and Hold On, I'm Coming were written by Isaac Hayes and David Porter. And so he was a, a songwriter first, and he was one of the people that helped write and arrange a lot of the records on stack. So if you hear like... Um, Try a little tenderness by Otis Redding, like the the horn intro in the beginning and stuff like that. My dad came up with those arrangements because he was a self taught musician. So my dad was a musical genius. He never he he my dad didn't know how to read. He learned how to read and then became salutatorian of his high school class. Mm. And then he did, he only knew how to play the piano with two fingers and became this just genius piano player and and songwriter producer. So he was a self taught musician that was just you know a phenom. And 
I say this all the time. He invented this is real, and I hope people understand this. And I, you can you can you can research this for yourself. But he invented modern day R and B. So so when you think of R and B, like what do you think of? So the sound of R and B. Again, I've done research on this, so it probably wouldn't be fair. But like soul, like okay. like no, okay, soul, but like, like so bass guitars. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's rhythm and blues, rhythm and blues. Yeah. But but what else? Let me. So when you think of what about strings and flutes? I mean, that goes into soul. No, no, that wasn't soul. See, before my dad, there was the stack sound, and then there was the Motown sound. So you had like the Temptations and Smokey Robinson and Diana Ross, and their their music was very popular. Yes, and, and blue, 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 and all these flutes and strings. And then down the south, you had Otis Redding and Isaac Hayes and the Staple Singers and Johnny Taylor, and it was all organs and bass and da 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 da. da. So. When my dad made his first album, Hot Butter Soul, his first critically acclaimed album, Hot Butter Soul, he didn't even have, there was nobody, and there's a, if you listen to Walk On By, it's a big string intro. It sounds like a big orchestra playing at the beginning of it, right? It's an amazing intro. There were no string musicians in Memphis, so he had to take the reel and drive up to Detroit and record the strings in Detroit. Mm -hmm. So he took the a rock guitar and an organ and put strings and flutes over it. It was nobody ever did that before then. And now you can't imagine music without it. You can't imagine an R&B song without flutes. You can't imagine mm. Mask Off by Future without that flute in it. Mm. You can't imagine the Shiznick with Snoop Dogg without that flute in it. That boop, boop, doo, 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 with them hard ass drums. Isaac Hayes made that. Shaft, all these things that you see, like no, it was it was literally like the Bloods and the Crips. Like, but that's he, the Motown I, he gets sound. The credit for that because when I looked at it, it, says he was one of the people that um created this they call it southern sound i forgot exact well, the exact I, word i call it it's called symphonic soul so that means he was taking like so so every so after isaac Hayes, there was curtis mayfield and barry white so when you think of those teddy pendergrass and gamble and huff and all these records where they're using strings and flutes and all that kind of stuff because motel was like we don't do that that country ass r&b rhythm and blues barry gordy was selling pop records he was selling hits Mm. And my dad was like, yo, but we can merge the two. And people used to say, nobody's ever going to listen to that shit. Ain't nobody finna listen to no organs and a rock guitar with some strings and flutes on it. And they were like, okay. And he did it and then changed music. And 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 now that is what modern day R&B is. So that's crazy. So again, I, I have like spurts in the show where I just ask questions strictly from a fan yeah. perspective. So would you say you you rich just off of, the, uh, off of his catalog alone? Well, you got to remember my dad lost those rights. So when my dad filed for bankruptcy, it's a crazy story, but the short version is he took out a loan for $2 million. Stax owed him like 14. When he, when Stax filed for bankruptcy, he couldn't pay the 2 million back. So he defaulted on his loan. So they took ownership, not the, so sometimes when you default on loans, they'll say the money coming in goes to us until we get paid back. And then you can start making money again. They didn't do that. They garnished the actual asset. Oh, so they took his God. writer's shares. This is before sampling. So this is in 74. For anybody who knew that was sampling was going to go on. So they took that. So what happened was then the, the bank that had it auctioned it off to two white guys, hold up, for $50,000. And, and, and the only people that showed up to the auction were those two white guys. So the fix was in. They were like, yo. So, I mean, my dad had, at this time, my dad had $50,000 to go get his songwriter shares. He got 50 grand. He get, They auctioned him for $50,000. He could have counted my in and say, boom, let me come write shares back. I actually, here's the thing. This is one of these moments, and I know that life is weird like this, but I wouldn't change it. I'm going to tell you why I wouldn't change it. And I said this before because at that time, my dad had left Memphis and we moved to L.A. And if my dad would have kept his money, I would have grown up in Los Angeles, California. I'd have been friends with all the Jacksons and Lionel Richie and all them. And, you know what I'm saying, all, all, Barry Go all, all those people, right? And for me, my identity is so rooted in Atlanta. Like when we had to downgrade, Atlanta's where my mom said we're raising kids. And so coming here, it gave me my, like, culture. So the person that I am is because of my, my mom and my dad in the city of Atlanta. Without mm -hmm. it, I guarantee I would have been some rich kid rapping Ferraris around trees on coke, doing all kind of crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. I'd have been a spoiled asshole. The, the struggle of the struggle of of coming up, you know, because my parents got divorced. I I lived in a one bedroom apartment with my mom and my two sisters. 
You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I, I say this all the time. Like I slept in the bed with my mom through middle school, mm. right? So I'm talking like sixth, seventh, eighth grade. You sharing the bed with your mom. Then we, when I got in high school, we got a two a two bedroom apartment, and my sister slept in the bed with my mom all through high school, and I had my own room because I was a boy, and that like people, and then all the time people think you're rich while you're going to school. Mm. So it's like, man, Isaac, hey, your dad, show you rich, you da 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 da. And I'm like, I'm, not, you know, you don't want to tell them that yo, we really broke. Mm. You know, you you keep it, but so it built character. It always made me want to like earn and own and all that kind of stuff. So in that era where everybody sampled my dad's records, he probably missed out on forty, fifty, sixty million dollars. You know what I'm saying? Damn. So so when you hear all these songs, so I'll, I'll name some songs that that have sampled Isaac Hayes. So can I live by Jay Z? Cream by Wu Tang Clan. Yep. Um, Tupac. St- stranded on stranded on stranded on death row by Dr. Dre. Explosive by Dr. Dre. Um, um, hold on. Uh, I, I hope uh, no, 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 no. I got him. <laughs> um, for the record, I love you, Mary J. Blige. Um, it's 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 so many records, man. Tupac, Me Against the World. Mm-hmm. Um, even to the point that the weekend, Beyonce, Metro Boomin still. No, uh, listen. I'm telling you, listen. When Erykah Badu. When 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 Apple Music came out with their greatest hundred albums of all time. Yeah. I seen that video. There's probably like 14 or so, and I, I even, I even left out the white artists. They mm-hmm. had Portishead on there. That album sampled Isaac Hayes. They had the Beastie Boys on there. They sampled Isaac Hayes. They had Massive Attack on there. They sampled Isaac Hayes. Like of the hundred albums, there's like 14 albums that sampled my dad. But Hot Butter Soul is not on the hundred greatest albums of all time. That's like it's, it's cool. But my point is, those are the things that gets that we get missed in our culture. That if we're not highlighting and letting people know like where that stuff comes from. It just gets lost in the sauce, man. It gets lost. But you say you're working on getting so that we, back. So we reclaimed those first, that first batch of publishing, so it's back. Now, the Isaac Hayes era, so when my dad became a solo artist from 69 to 78, we about to get all that back. We about to file termination notices and take all that back. So that's Shaft, High Butter Soul, um, To Be Continued, Black Moses, the Isaac Hayes movement, Joy, uh, Groovathon, Truck Turner, uh, yeah, Truck Turner, Shaft. Three tough guys, like we finna get all that back. So I guess this wouldn't even be a good question, but I'm curious. In today's society, you have so many people who um, lease their their publish pub, publishing, and I mean you have people that sell it, but yeah. you have people that lease it as well. Well, probably, yeah, kind of. I'm about to say you working so hard to get it back, you probably would never even let let loose let let it go. There, and, and here's a reason why. And I have so people that sell their catalogs, and most of the people that do it, it's and I understand why they do it. I don't knock anybody that wants to sell their catalog. One big thing about people that sell their catalogs is they can still tour. So when I hear like Justin Bieber or Justin Timberlake or Andre 3000 or Bruce Springsteen or whatever, they can sell their catalog, but they can get hit the road and go make $30 million. Okay. Isaac Hayes is not here to do that. So the only source of income is that that musical real estate that's got to always come back to us. But they be dropping off big bags for that. Like I know, like yeah, that, like, I mean, a hundred million. No, no, trust me, I know. We did it. We did a partnership. I've done a partnership for that first section. We got a bag, but it's dude, there's how much? I'm not telling you. I want to know. No, I can't, man. But listen, I got it's. We are. I have a. I have a company with my family. It's twelve of us all together. So I don't care what you talking about splitting. <laughs> and my dad had a widow, so she get a chunk of it, and then all the other kids get the rest. So please understand, it's not what you, it, yeah, but it's I still, get it. Okay, it's still an opportunity. It's still it's still a great opportunity to build generational wealth, and that's what I want to do with the company and continue to get more IP back and build and grow. Do you think you don't? Because bro, you was big in music, bro. Like, like I got I was no. I was, listen, I wasn't big in music. I'll say this. I, I say that I did a, I did a couple records. Hold I on. say, do I have to? No, 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 no. <laughs> Here's because I because I stopped my musical I stopped my musical career before it kind of got started. Listen, okay. the, the biggest record that I'm that I'm there's two there's two records that I'm a part of. I see you scrolling. I'm just but saying. The two, <laughs> but, the, but the biggest record that I probably did was Money in the Bank on Lil Scrappy and Young Buck. It was mm-hmm. a gold record, gold ringtone. Then T Pain did Buy You a Drink, and mm-hmm. he sampled. He took part of the the lyrics and cadence from Money in the Bank, and that record sold six million singles. So I got writer, I got a percentage of that record, and so what I was saying, what I've said before is, is that my trauma of my dad getting things stolen from him had always never made me want to sell my publishing. So typically in music, when you enter the realm of music and you get a song out there, right, you get a hit record, right, 
somebody wants to come along and say, you're going to do a publishing deal. So when I did Money in the Bank, and a record was like number eight on the Hot 100. I think it made it a number. Like, I know it was, it was like top It was like top 20 on the Billboard Hot 100, and it made it to like number eight or something, eight or seven on the rap charts. People were trying to give me publishing deals, and I turned them all down. Mm. And when you do a publishing deal, it's, it's kind of like, we going to give you this bread, but then we're going to put you on other records and give you opportunities because now we're going to get 50% of everything you do. Okay. I didn't do that. So it was harder for me to get on records because they're looking at it like, yo, dog, we're not going to let you just come in the music business and eat 100%. Yeah. You got to cough it up. And so for me, I got frustrated and was like, man, I'm going to just start signing artists, which was a bad idea. But I started signing artists because I was like, okay, I'm going to sign artists because I was spending my own money. So the money that I made from these records, I done spent 100000 200000 on trying to break artists. And at this time, we talking about you still got to pay the, the radio station. You got to do the mix CD. You got to play the strip club DJ. You got to do all this shit. So it, it, it just got me frustrated. But in that process, I learned about music licensing. And licensing is the permission to use your song mm -hmm. without selling it. So can we use this song in this commercial? Yes. Can we use this song in this movie? Yes. You still own it. We just want permission. How much I want to pay? Oh, we'll give you fifty thousand dollars to use it in this movie. Oh, real? And I got and I own half of it. Yeah. So you'll get twenty five grand. Done deal. Mm -hmm. We want to use this. We want to use this in this movie, like ATL. Like, in any like ATL was um, ATL was more was more important for me. The movie ATL was more important for me than even Money in the Bank for two reasons. One. I licensed like eight songs to be in that movie. Mm. So I made like, before I ever made a check from a hit record, I had made a bunch of money licensing my music for a movie. Mm. So my mind was like, oh, this is, I ain't got to sell my publishing. And Money in the Bank was one of those records that I sent in to the music supervisor at ATL and they, and they licensed that record. So that's how I've always looked at music is like ownership. So then somebody told me about this company where you can actually send them all your music and then music supervisors come in there and just take your music and put it on TV shows and reality shows and stuff like that. So I started doing that. Mm. So then I was like, well, see, I'm not, I ain't going to be pops. So I'm like, I'm not going to be my dad. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to be the first black man to win an Academy Award or break, or I wasn't going to be an artist. So I wasn't going to go out there and sing or anything like that. So I just, you know, wanted to, to create an income stream for myself that I own. So nobody could take it away from me. So I started doing that. And then I would go to the mailbox and get a check every quarter for like 25 grand, 30 grand, and be like, cool, I'm good. Mm. So that's so to me, I can still pursue music, but I set myself up that I, I can pay my bills. And I and I don't live, I don't live lavish. Regardless of what you see me. Hmm. <laughs> reg <laughs> regardless of what you see me pull up in. Because you want some boy. <laughs> that's but look, but listen, that was a purchase that I made at the age of. 46. You see what I'm saying? Respect. Okay. It can, yeah. I, 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 put I earned work in. it. Yeah. I put in yeah, the work. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I deserve that. that. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> I, you know what I'm saying? So regardless of that, I'm just saying that, you know, I've done that, that I wanted to create an income stream. I didn't want to worry about that kind of stuff because I was always worried about, you know, you got to have ownership because once that money starts coming in, it'll always come in. Bro, we're going to get the fan I promise. I'm more interested yeah, in you. It's cool. And we could do another one, but... Just curious, because we hear it all the time. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Zaytoven even, was it Zaytoven? I think he might have spoke about it. Um, when he talked about, Kyron, help me out, he bought a chain for like 10000 Yeah, he got a $10,000 check and he bought a chain. That mm -hmm. was Zaytoven, right? Or was that, um, damn, who was Gucci, uh, huh? Yeah, okay, Zaytoven. He's, like, we, hear, we hear artists talk about the image all the time, right? right? You, you know that you bought that at 46, and that was a gift for you because you earned it, right? But how much good attention does that get you in, like, in and promote your business for you? For me, none, because I don't go anywhere. Mm. I was I, just wondering, does it work? Because we always talk about buy a, like, do all this, get the chains, get all this. Bro, I've been dressing like this, except for the time where I really was into shoes and sneakers and I had like that. But I'm a, I'm pretty much a t-shirt, jeans, and white shoes kind of dude because it's just like I'm focused on my business. It depends on what you're doing. I think. For people that might be, and I'm gonna tell you this, this is some game. This is real, and I can I curse on here? Okay, cool. <laughs> so well, I'll just I won't curse, but I'll say money and sex are perception. Listen to what I'm saying. Money and sex are perception. If you look like you get bad chicks, mm. women don't mind sleeping with you. Mm. If you look like you get money, 
people don't mind giving you money. Mm-hmm. The first, the first, I had to fight for the first four thousand dollars I ever made on a beat, mm-hmm. right? Like, man, well, why does he deserve four thousand or six thousand dollars for this beat? One of my first records I ever produced, even before Money in the Bank, right? When I started doing Money in the Bank, after I did Money in the Bank, I'm like, yo, what, what's your fee? Oh, seventeen five twenty five done. Cause I already know you getting money, mm-hmm. so. If you already getting, once you start making money, people don't have a problem giving you money. Mm. If you already knocking down and dating bad chicks, bad chicks recognize that. They're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not doing, if a woman thinks she's doing you a favor by sleeping with you, it's going to be a hard road. Facts. But if it looks like, yo, if it's not me, it's going to be another girl. Mm. So I might as well, right? It's the, it's the perception of that. So in certain instances, success can be about perception, but there's still got to be some fundamental fly shit associated with it. Mm. You can get money, but what product are you building? You can get girls, but what is what is underneath that to sustain that? Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's I'm going to f- give you the OG game. No, I like that. Let's get the fan base, bro. <laughs> um, so, again, I think I said this at the podcast. I, mean, I mm-hmm. feel like a lot of us was introduced to fan base during COVID when yeah. over uh, Clubhouse. Yep. What has changed since then? Because I feel like you had a lot of momentum then. I got a lot of momentum now. I think the, I think the momentum of the pandemic, because everybody was inside, mm-hmm. and we were we were seeing in real time the effect of black culture. Versus was on TV. Yeah, we blew up Clubhouse. Yep. Mm-hmm. D Nice was on Instagram. Like we were like, yo, black culture is making tech cool. Yeah. Uh huh. Like oh shit, like this, we making this shit cool. And so I had I had founded the company in 2018, but took me like six months to build it. Mm. So I had like, in, in going back to music publishing, the only way I was able to build fan base was my music career because I was able to go to my performing rights organization, which is BMI, ASCAP, CSAC, those are PROs, mm-hmm. and get an advance on money that I would make from putting my music on TV and film. But again, it wasn't ownership. So they just giving me money that was gonna flow in anyway. So I, I advanced myself like $200,000 to build fan base. So without me knowing about music publishing and never doing a publishing deal, I would have never had the money to build fan base. Building the app taught me about ownership. The first thing that I did when um the first thing that I did when I came up with the idea for fan base is trademark the name fan base. Mm. Because I hadn't even built the app yet. But I said I want to own because you got to think any idea that you think of, okay, it's a podcast, a clothing line, whatever, trademark it first. It's not trademarking might cost you anywhere between five hundred and a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars, but trademark your stuff because then you can take your idea as far as you want to take it. Mm. You want to build something, have to stop it and change the name because somebody else got the name. You know what I'm saying? So I always, I'm all my my first thing is how can no one steal this from me, and how can I own it? So before I even met my CTO, even did anything, I just trademark the name. I want to build a social media platform where people can monetize their content called fan base because everyone is a fan of something, and everyone has a fan base. Mm. So that's the reason why I did it. So we get to that point. Um, I'm spending the money to build the app. I'm like running out of money because it's like, you know, two hundred thousand dollars starting to get low. COVID hits, and in tech, you usually go get money from VCs. So VCs are venture capitalists that loan you money for a percentage of your company and some type of control and say so on what you do. The problem is that black folks don't get no money from VCs. Mm. Like in 2023. In 2023, less than half of 1% of all startups got, black founder startups got money from venture capital. Mm. So if there was $100 billion, right, $500 million went to everybody that's black, all the black VCs. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy. Damn, bro, that's crazy. So we got fan base now. But I'm asking again, you had the more. So, the, so, so, what, so, so here's what happened. This is a this is a really detailed story because I I created the momentum. It's fine, bro. Take it. To, we I, got time. It's, it's I created the momentum. So, my good friend Dawn Dixon, she was the first black woman to raise a million dollars using equity crowdfunding. So, equity crowdfunding is this thing that Barack Obama and Joe Biden put into law that allows anybody to invest in a company, right, with small amounts of money. Mm-hmm. Before that, so from 1933 all the way to 2015, you could only invest in a tech startup if you were something called an accredited investor, which is basically a hustle to say you had to be rich. Mm. So to qualify, so to qual, so you had to have qualified to invest in a tech startup. So to qualify, you had to have a million dollars net worth minus your house, or make two hundred thousand dollars a year 
for two consecutive years and you qualify as an accredited investor. Mm. Average American salary, dog. Yeah. Like even even before then, from 1933, dog. This is like after the you know what I'm saying the Great Depression. When well, anybody had money, it was basically a way for rich people to, to get in right? yeah. to get in on deals before the general public could. Mm. So if you're thinking of Apple, Google, IBM, Facebook, Uber, all these companies were invested in by rich people already. Mm. I'll give you an example. Guy by the name of Orrin Michaels. I, Orrin Michaels, I've never met you, but I probably said your name a thousand times, but I think it's a, a good reason. Orrin Michaels was a guy in tech. He was one of the seed investors in Uber. Uber raised half a million dollars in their seed round. He put $500,000. They, they, I mean, Uber raised $500,000. Or Michaels put five thousand dollars into Uber mm. in t- 2010. The company went public on the stock market in 2019. By 2019, nine years later, his five thousand dollars was worth twenty four million dollars. Oh my god! Mm. So imagine, you know how many street niggas I know with five G strippers, hustlers with five grand. Damn, true that. You and ten of your friends can get together and put five hundred dollars. Imagine taking five hundred dollars and turning it into two point four million dollars in yes. nine years. Yes, exactly. So that's, that's what I say about investing. And I'm not trying to like I'm not I'm not a I'm not a investment or stock guru, but investing is really just like long term gambling. Mm. It's just like I put some money in here. I'm gonna either lose it, I'm gonna break even, or I'm gonna make some bread. Mm. So if you understand gambling, you understand investing. You just gotta know like when to stay. When to pull out, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it is. And so um, this law allowed, it, it wiped out that accredited investor rule. So now you can invest in startups, but particular ones that qualify, that go through this process of getting vetted by the SEC and all that kind of stuff. So when I saw Don do it, a friend of mine suggested that you need to try the thing that Don did. And I knew Don. I was like, Don, teach me how to do this. And she coached me on, like, the way that you raise capital. And I put my twist on it. But here's something that happened. This was in the middle of the pandemic. And I'm going to rewind real quick to, to, to even understand why I even thought equity crowdfunding was important. So remember I told you I met them VCs. Mm-hmm. I had a meeting with a VC, and it was a white venture capitalist. It was a white lady. And I was trying to raise money for fan base. And she goes, why would you want to go up against Instagram and Facebook? Like, they're giants. They're these enormously successful, popular companies. Why would you want to try to build anything that competes with that? And she was saying that, like, this is stupid. And I was like, well... At the time, I had, this is well, well after I had built the app, but I never told anybody I built Fanbase for two years or a year and a half. But I was like, the reason is because I can build anything that Mark Zuckerberg can build, but Mark Zuckerberg can't build black people. Mm. And I know that's what makes social media work. So I apply for Start Engine. I get in there, and I get ex- only 2% of people, all people, Gender, race, get accepted equity crowdfunding. So I had my shit together. I made two classes of stock in fan base. I made voting share stock and non-voting share stock. I'm the only one that owns voting share stock in the company. There is no board. Because remember, Steve Jobs got fired from Apple, got voted, had his board. Not doing that again. My mind is thinking, how can I protect this and no one steal it from me? So I said, okay, I only offer common stock to invest in the company. So I made two classes of stock, got accepted to Start Engine, and I, and I did that. Now, when you get accepted to equity crowdfunding, you can't tell nobody until your raise goes live. So I got accepted in August. So my raise wasn't going to go live till like October 29th. Mm. So August, September, October, I couldn't tell nobody that I was about to raise money. But at the same time, I got invited to this thing called Clubhouse. Mm. I got an invite. When I got invited to Clubhouse, there was like 3,000 people on the app. This is August. You had to get an invite. Wasn't nobody on there. It literally was nobody on the app. So I got on there, had a couple conversations, and I was like, all right. So I started making some cool little rooms. And then the lady that worked there at the time, they would give you invites to invite people. But you would only get like one or two invites a week. Mm -hmm. I got like 14 and 15 at a time. Mm. So I invited like Snoop Dogg. And I invited Hannah Kane and Dina Marto. And if y'all know who these people are. And then I invited uh, Van Lathan Mm. and Charlamagne and Killer Mike and all these people. Because when you you used to invite people to Clubhouse, your name would be attached to them like, Brought in by so and so. So you go to Snoop Dogg's page and say, nominated by Isaac Hayes the third. You go to these people's name, right? So I said, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna invite everybody and I'm gonna blow this bitch up. Then shortly after that, um Fadia Cater was at Instagram. She got invited to Clubhouse. So between me and Fadia, we invited the whole music industry. So then from my invites, you start seeing 
Meezy and 21 Savage. Yeah, they went and, crazy. And Meek Mill. Yeah. And so I said, this is what's going to happen. And then, it, and then I heard it one day. Here we go again, blowing up another white person's app that we don't own. Got him. That's exactly what I wanted us to say. Because I wanted us to prove the value that black culture has on technology. So by the time that that 4,000 people there, by the time November was there, Clubhouse had over like half a million users. They had like six or 700,000 users. Mm. So in three months, they went from 4,000 users to like six, 700,000 users, right? So as soon as I was able to launch my raise, I went back on Clubhouse and said, yo, I just found an app that didn't have audio rooms, mind you. We have audio rooms now. But I was like, I just launched an app called Fanbase. You can invest in it. The minimum to invest is $245. Go to Star Engine, And everybody, like that first 50 or 60000 $70,000 came from Clubhouse. Mm. And I started that whole process. And then I started doing interviews and talking about the tech because I knew I had a solid app. Fanbase is a phenomenal. But this is like, this is one of those like, get it out the mud, grind, like, we don't get, I ain't get $10 million to start my app. I started with $200,000, and my goal was only to raise a $1 million, because at the time, the most you could raise in equity crowdfunding was $1 million. So COVID hits, I'm going to tell you, so, so once we're in COVID, I started to raise the million. I raised 300000 in, like, three weeks. Then I do the breakfast club. Mm. When I tell you the raise went viral after doing the breakfast club, we – I probably raised like two and a half million dollars in like a day. Damn. So I had people on a wait list to invest in fan base. So I reached that million dollar goal, which is like damn near gave me a panic attack. And I was like, you just raised a million dollars and you got these people's money. So then the SEC comes along and says, guess what? Because of COVID, we're going to up the maximum to five million. Mm. But you got to get an audit. Audit takes like three months. So they they announced the law in like November. They, they put it in motion in April. So so April, I had to do an audit. By the time the audit was done, I got to take that money. And I'm sorry, in February, by the time April hit, I was able to collect that money too. So we wound up raising about $3.2 million in that first round. And that gave us some serious capital. But in that process, Clubhouse reached 1 million users. Mm. And that from August to January, you know what Clubhouse did? Clubhouse went and raised $100 million at a billion-dollar valuation. Wow. And didn't give anybody, the first million people, the opportunity to invest in Clubhouse. So wow. me, all the people that came there, that first million people that blew it up, they didn't give. They they, they might have gone to a couple of celebrities and let them kind of and, and really talk to them kind of nasty, like yeah, get in or get out, like whatever. We the hot shit, and some people did and some people didn't. But they weren't like gracious, like yo, for you guys blowing this up, we are gonna let y'all own part of this because I mean it's gonna help y'all continue to blow it up. And they did it. And I turned to my CTO and said, we built an audio, and we built it in two months. So we added audio rooms to fan base, which we have now, which were monetized so you can make money while speaking in them and you can have subscribers in them at the same time. Bro, but so my question is, I think I might have said this before, but it seems like, I mean, of course you have to, but again, just from outside looking in, mm -hmm. like you're promoting the hell out of this app. Mm -hmm. All of the apps that pop, we didn't have to get promoted. Like no white person promoted it. We mm -hmm. did it, right? Mm -hmm. You think of Clubhouse. We got on there mm -hmm. turned up. Instagram, it, it almost felt like I got to get on this app or else I'm missing something. Right. But with fan base, I don't feel that. It feels like I see you working it. Right. Like like a single almost. Yeah. How, I, do, how do we get it to somebody like we're I gotta be on this? I'm missing something. Well, there's a there's a couple things. One, I call this like familiarity bias. For anybody that's ever anybody that has started a business, including you you are less likely to be supported by people you know than complete strangers. Mm -hmm. It's just the truth. You start your business, your closest friends won't buy nothing from you. They'll be like, give me a discount, but a complete stranger. Like Most of the people that invested in fan base, I did not know. Mm -hmm. Even to this day, some of the people that I've known for like 10, 15 years have not invested in fan base. It's this bias that we have against ourselves, especially in the black community, about supporting one another, and it feels weird. And so I always say, like, building wealth in the black community is looked at as a competition, not collaboration. Mm. You, we not, we're not trying to create, like, we, it, I'm trying to create hundreds of millionaires. I'm not trying to create one billionaire, mm. which is me. And then I get to go around and say I'm a billionaire. I'm, the reason why I let people invest is collectively, especially to, your, like, young people, I'm telling anybody watching this, go invest in fan base. Like, like cause you because you literally, your culture is what makes things move. The younger generation is what makes things hot. Mm. So who better than to give an opportunity to invest in? If I, if, I, if I was between the ages of 17, 
18, well, probably 18, you might be getting 18 to it, but 18 and 24. I put I put three hundred ninety nine dollars on fan base and then tell all my friends to come over there and let's all do this and let's run this thing up to a hundred billion dollar company and cash out. Mm. I would. There's no way I wouldn't do it. You you know what I think mm -hmm. it is because you're right. But now that I'm thinking about it, all of the places offer something new. It's like some type of innovation. Think about it. Like so, when Instagram came out, it was the first of its kind to show mm -hmm. pictures. Mm -hmm. Then when uh. TikTok came out, even like when Vine came out, it was the first of its kind that did video, the right? Video, you know, right? three seconds. Then yeah. when TikTok came out, it was the first of its kind to do what it did, kind of. Short like, form video, like musically, yeah, short exactly. form video, right. And then Clubhouse, the first of its kind. Right, so audio. And what ways are you being innovative to get us over there to be like, yo, I can't miss out on this because this is different? Monetization. And that's the part that people don't understand. It's the money. The money that's being generated. So we see we looking at it as fun. Like we look at apps like, can I have fun? But in the process of you having fun, these apps aren't worth 100 billion, 300 billion, 500 billion, 1.8 trillion for nothing. They're, 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 they're apps. And so the idea from fan base was subscriptions. Again, I Google this, run it through chat GBT or whatever. Like before fan base, there was no app that you could subscribe to a person using your phone. Mm -hmm. You always had to subscribe to people using a credit card or a debit card. So I don't care if it's OnlyFans, which came out like a year or two before Fanbase, Patreon, um, Twitch. You still have to use a credit card. The ability to pull out your phone and go to someone's profile and hit the subscribe button and subscribe to them easy. So if I can go to my boy Kyle's page right now, if I can show you the ability to hit a button and then hit subscribe, and then it pop up, and you subscribe to somebody, I invented that. That didn't exist. The, uh, now, Instagram does it. TikTok can do it. X can do it. I invented that in 2019. And the reason why I know, and the reason why I know that is Apple said, you can't do it. And I was terrified, because remember, I, I took $200,000 and built an app, and be like, man, wait, you think I done got all the way here, I done trademarked the name, we done built this app to have people to be able to subscribe to you. You can follow you. That was the thing that I wanted. I still I didn't want to interrupt the following. I didn't I didn't want to interrupt people from being able to be seen and they're kind of be seen. A lot of people think fan base, you have to pay to be on the app. Like you gotta pay to be on there and, and the app has subscribers. No, the subscribers are yours. So you can have followers on fan base and you can have subscribers. But I wanted, I wanted to, I was thinking about like, do you know how much money? I was looking at like how much money like some of these gamers were making. I'm like, yeah, this is this is before I even knew who Kasanat was. This is like when I'm thinking about Ninja. Ninja was making like four million a year off off streaming on Twitch and shit like that. I'm like, well, if he can make that, what could Cardi B make? Mm. What could you make? You can make enough money to probably pay your phone bill. You don't have to be making yeah, millions. Something, yeah, it's, sure. it's paper, it's money. So Apple said you can't do it. So the reason that they told us was because they have this thing called a subscription profile. This is a very detailed story, and I tell this because I know I'm the person that invented in-app purchase peer-to-peer -peer subscription. So Apple, every time you subscribe to something like Spotify, Netflix, Apple on the back end has a, a profile for you that lets you know that you are subscribed to Netflix. You are subscribed to Spotify. Apple's verbatim words were, we're not letting you build an app where, in theory, someone could subscribe to 20 people, right? You wind up with 100 million users, and we have 2 billion subscription profiles to keep up with. We're not doing that. That's what they told me. And I was like, oh, shit. So we said, okay, so every time that someone subscribes to someone on your platform, it's a profile. Mm. So the initial MVP of fan base that I built was a tiered system, which means you can subscribe to one person. That's a profile. If you want to subscribe to somebody more, you go up to three. You swap out the one for the three and five. And Ramiro turned to me and said, you're about to do something that no one's ever been done. Remember this. Like, no one's ever done this. You're about to do something that nobody's ever done. And we did it. We launched the app. So initially, you could only subscribe to up to five people on fan base. My initial vision was you could subscribe to as many people as you want. 2022, we heard Instagram was doing subscriptions. Mind you, I, can, I launched in 20, 20, the end of 2019, right? The, the end of 2018 going into 2019. We heard Instagram was doing subscriptions. So we call up Apple because you have a rep at Apple. And I asked my Apple rep, I was like, yo, I just seen the thing where Instagram's doing subscriptions, but they're doing it like how we wanted to do it. 
And her response, who will remain anonymous, she was like, yeah, Apple's had a change of heart of how we view subscriptions. Mm. And I was like, I bet. Because you can only subscribe to Netflix once. But a person that can subscribe to Nike, the Lakers, Cardi B, Lotto, and Pizza Hut for content that they all make, that's five subscriptions. That's way more money coming in. So Apple created this thing, this SKU system. Now they have SKUs. So they have price points. So now they made this whole system where you can create SKUs. So we, so on fan base, you can, you, can, you can subscribe to somebody for $2.99, $4.99, $9.99, $14.99, $19.99, $24.99, $49.99, and $99.99 a month. Mm. And all that exists. And so when you see that on TikTok, you see that on Instagram, that little subscription with the crown, they got that from me. That, that again, what I say, what you're building with this gives me the confidence to continue because I'm just a black dude that used to make records that wanted to build a tech startup, but it's the innovation and the ideas that black people come up with. That's the secret sauce. We just don't have the hundred, the hundred million dollars of somebody give you $35 million to build it out the gate. So the reason why fan base is going to look like a grind is because we're not coming in. We don't get to come in. Like, put like, I'll give you a prime example. Instagram, they raised $500,000 from venture capital out the gate to build Instagram. From VCs, because they they went to Stanford, they knew people. It's always that thing. If you look like, and this is no shade to any of these phenomenal founders that have built amazing companies, but there's a difference between how black founders start their company and how white founders start their company. See, Jeff Bezos was able to raise like three hundred thousand dollars from family and friends to start Amazon. You know, three hundred thousand dollars. You ever seen you ever seen that video? That old video with this black kid. He's like. He's like, Donald Trump is talking. He's like, yeah, I started my business with my father from a, for a small loan of a million dollars. He's sitting at the table counting pennies like, small loan of a million dollars. Like, of course. Like, anybody can start a business with a small loan from their daddy for, with a million dollars. Mm. Of course. But we don't. that's not how we start our companies, man. You, we don't, don't, we you, don't, you probably thought of this. What? You know what I think can help? What? That these people aren't doing? A lot of this is like grind, go get it money. Right, like you gotta like Instagram anything about you gotta make a bunch of reels, you gotta get a bunch of views for you to get money, right? Mm -hmm. What if you paid a couple people, mm -hmm. I don't know, thirty, forty thousand dollars a year, have exclusive content for a fan base mm -hmm. where they gotta bring it in? Kind of like how Barstool did with million dollars worth of game. Okay. I'm gonna tell you why that doesn't typically work because every platform does that. The, I'm going to tell you, no, listen, they all do it. But the point is it doesn't work. So what I say all the time is you have to build community on social media. You can't, it's celebrities don't make social media platforms. Communities do. Mm -hmm. It's the people that are there while the celebrities are out celebrating. So the reason that Clubhouse went up and then went down is because when outside went back up, everybody went back on tour making music on the road. So 21 Savage and Kevin Hart, they ain't about to be on Clubhouse no more. They gone. Yeah. And plus the way they, they handled the plus plus the kind of way they handled the black community, it turned a lot of people off. Like, oh, okay, so y'all just pumped us up with, with Negroes, like, all right, cool, well, we out of here. And it 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 took a nosedive, you know what I'm saying? So um there have been several apps that try to buy audience. I'll give you one. I'll give you one I I, I name one. There's one called AMP that was on Amazon. You remember yeah, AMP? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know who Amazon paid? A few like Joe Button, yep. Nicki Minaj, Young Boy. Jason Lee, he had a couple Candy, small two people like Candy. Wayne. No, he had Nala Simone. They had like right. they had a couple people, and yeah. they went the f out of business because mm -hmm. you can't buy celebrity. You can't like celebrity doesn't. It's the people that stay on. Like fan base is is it exists right now because of the user base. We almost have seven hundred thousand users. It's because the people that are on the app while I'm sleep that are in London in the UK that are using the app. That's what makes apps. It's communities. So I just want to. And then this is another thing. This is the, the true true story to all your your, your viewers out here. There's no amount of innovation, mark my words, I'm telling you right now, there's no amount of innovation that Facebook and Instagram can do to capture kids. They can't, because kids are always going to be on apps that their parents are not. Like, I'm, and I but we've seen TikTok do it. No, but, but but TikTok was a new, right. And then and now TikTok got a whole bunch of old people on it now too, and kids are looking like, where are we going next? Hmm. Where are we finna go next? And I'm like, I got you, don't worry. Come on over here, hmm. away from mama and daddy. And make some bread and have fun and do all that. And, and, and the thing about it is, there is a one thing that I say is there is a there's the exception 
and there's the rule. Platforms like Facebook and Instagram are the exception. That means they're the one in 100,000 that become these unicorns really, really quick within a year. Clubhouse, that's the exception. The rule, Patreon is a $4 billion company. That's a lot of money. You know when Patreon was founded? When? 2013. They've been around for 11 years. Wow. You know when ByteDance, the company that has TikTok, was founded? 2012. Mm. You see what I'm saying? That's the rule. The rule is it's going to take 10 years to blow this thing up. That makes sense. Okay. It's the grind. It, it ta- it's, 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 it's not the one. The ones that we're thinking about, but there's a lot of other popular apps that come out that wind up being multi-billion dollar companies. But we've seen Patreon kind of get behind Joe, too, though. Like, they gave him a position in a company. I, I, listen, I know. I know. I know. Because, like, Joe was one of the people who brought a lot of people to that. I mean, of course. But, but here's, the, here's the difference between Patreon and fan base. Patreon is not a community. It's a paywall. Yeah. So once you go there to see Joe, it's not like another person comes up for free that you can watch. Right. Or audio room that you can jump in or your own content that you can share with the community and talk about. It don't exist. How much you say you, I feel like you had said a number that I thought wasn't correct. Because you said Patreon only give you like, how much, like, because they give me most of the money. Give me most of my money. Most most of these platforms are around 50-50 ref share. Nah, it ain't 50. Hold on. Twitch, no, no, listen. Patreon can be more. Twitch is a 50-50 split. Absolutely. YouTube Shorts is a 50-50 split. TikTok gives you like one to two cents per 4,000 views. I'm saying money, like far as how much, if I charge you $3, I feel like I get most of my $3. Hold on. You you, you might. It it might be that way. But I I I can do the math for you and let you know how much money everybody's leaving on the table. And the thing about it is like, Social media has done a really good job of convincing people that your content doesn't have any value. Mm. That's not worth nothing because attention is the currency that we're trading it for. Mm -hmm. You make the content, I get people to watch it. I get popular. uh, People think I'm famous. I get invited to host clubs. I got girls after me. I got guys in my DMs trying to fly me out. The, the, The currency of attention is something that social media spent a long time figuring out. What I'm saying is that there is a shift because now the in-app purchase payments and video are part of social media, monetization is coming. Mm. Subscriptions are going to be the wave of the future, but not just for the big boys, for everybody. I was just about to show you this. Yeah. I just put this in my group chat. Right. And I'm like, we get we got 12, 12 subscribers in a day, mm-hmm. right? Because I just so what I'm doing is I have a um a Patreon, exclusive Patreon show. Mm-hmm. Right? You have an exclusive fan base. Yeah. So I'm gonna mean, get you to come talk, to fan base. We to, I'm, I'm actually on fan base. No, but we're gonna get you, we're gonna get you like, we're gonna bring this whole thing and we're gonna make you rich. And then people gonna see like, all right, because it's a it's so much, it's so much more you can do on fan Yeah, base. and that's another thing I think people gotta believe it. Like, I think I've seen it work with Patreon and yeah. OnlyFans. That's it. Yeah. Like what well, even but you, with, but you but you seen it, but you you seen it work with OnlyFans because it's porn. Yeah, but I'm saying oh, we gonna, see no, we see people gonna, make money like even with, with okay, Patreon. Okay, tell me so. Tell me some name some people on Patreon that don't sell ass. On Patreon, I mean on, on OnlyFans that don't sell no, ass. No, no, I, of course. But even like we see, we start to see girls now. Like I think you even said you subscribe to Bad Bunny. She not Bad Barbie. She not showing no ass. No, no, no. But the but the point is the insinuation. Yeah. That it is is part of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, all I'm saying is we seen people make money from these apps like Patreon. We seen people yeah. make money from these apps like OnlyFans. So like even with a fan base. You get on that, you say it's 700,000 uh, users, users, but it still kind of feel empty like when right. I get there. 100%. So like, that's where, like, where where do you incentivize these people with large platforms? Not even me. Like, I don't have nothing compared to, like, you got people that, like, where's, why, where do you incentivize them? I, I, I can only incentivize them by saying you can invest and actually have equity and own it. Like, do you want, do you want to use the platform and make money and on the back end, have ownership, or even, or even saying giving you equity. Like yeah. I said this before, do you, you think I wouldn't give Kasana some equity in fan base? Mm. If Ka, how many people you think Kasana could bring to fan base? <laughs> a lot, a lot, right? You probably double that seven hundred, right? Quick, and th- so then when that happens, guess how much fan base is worth? A billion. It goes from a hundred sixty million dollar company to a one point six billion dollar company, right? Why don't we? Why don't we want to do that? Bruh, look, I'm. Si- it's gonna happen. I'm sitting over here like, yo, I'm just. It's gonna happen. But my point is, is this. Another thing that happens is this, and I'm just gonna keep it, keep it 100. Another thing that happens is that by me doing it that way, a lot of times some people don't like the labels don't get to eat. Don't know. I don't know. Record company want. Okay, name me an artist. I'll say, name me an artist right now. Name me a, a famous rapper. 
Just anybody. Any na- name me any famous rapper. I don't know, Lil Baby. Oh, perfect. Great example. All right. So Lil Baby has 23 million, 23.5 million followers on Instagram. Remember that number, 23.5 million followers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the videos on his Instagram page. I see 2.2 million views, 4.2 million views, 5.3 million views, 1.6 million views, 895,000 views, 897,000 views. Is that 24 million people? Mm -mm. Why? Because Instagram played with the algorithm. Why? Because it's money and marketing and, and ad dollars. Right. So if little, so you know how many people watch Sunday Night Football on NBC? A lot. 18 million. Mm-hmm. Little Baby has more followers than Sunday Night Football has viewers. Mm-hmm. You know how much Sunday Night Football charges for a commercial for 30 seconds? At least two M's. $800,000. Damn. For wow. a 30, eight, I'm thinking Super Bowl. I'm thinking Super I know, Bowl. But, but $800,000 for a 30 second spot. So if Lil Baby could post a video and reach 24 million people, he could charge like $1.2 million and never work again. Yeah, but now you cut me out. And I huh? need my money. Right. Instagram's like, well, we got to eat. So we got to smush you down to force Target and Walmart to run ads with us and not with you. That's the, the fix. So, okay, cool. So Lil Baby not only has 23.5 million followers, he can't even reach them. But let's monetize his fan base. Because this is what I say about fan base. Buried within your following on social media is a small group of people that really support you and want to see you win. I say this around 3 to 5%, right? But I'm going to go on the high side and say 5%. So I'm going to do some math for you and tell me that 5% of Little Baby's following is 1,175,000 people. That's his fan base. Those are the people that buy Little Baby albums, go to his concerts. He a platinum artist. That's him, right? If Little Baby says, all right, cool, I'm going to take my life on fan base and put stuff. I'm going to still give you all the free stuff that I do on Instagram because I can do that on fan base, but I'm going to do audio rooms with virtual meet and greets. I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to do a, 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 a little concert that nobody else can see. I'm going to post photos and videos of me working in the studio. I'm going to do a reality show about going on tour. And I'm going to charge $9.99 a month. And I'm going to give little baby $7 of that $9.99 a month. Guess what that is? Mm. $8.2 million a month. $98 million a year. So my question is. No, just think about that for a second. This money, little baby is leaving $98 million a year on the table. So is Cardi B, so is Lotto, so is Nike, so is Doja Cat. These labels don't want, this is, I guarantee you, this is more, he's making more, he'd make more money off fan base than he would do doing shows and selling records. Right. That's the, but my point is, it's the big, shh, we don't want him to know. Because if basketball players are making more money than the teams they play for, what do the teams have to do? Pay them more money. Yeah. If Lil Bay's making $100 million off his fan base page, what kind of deal does Universal got to cut him? But that's why I'm asking, right? So I know this play, with especially black people. Let me just be straight up, right? Yeah. We don't want to put that work in ourselves. We scared, right? I'm starting to understand this, but that's what I'm saying as an owner, right? Mm-hmm. If you paid because black people only want to see guaranteed, if you know that as a business owner, right, mm-hmm. is a potential for you to make $96 million, right? So even if it's not $96 million, I know if I'm just... What did they, they say? I'm shooting for the uh, moon, but I land on a star or something like that, yeah, right? Shoot for the moon, yeah. In most cool. stars, yeah. He might not make 96. I'm gonna offer him a hundred thousand, one fifty. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe you get it, right? Because it's guaranteed. Mm-hmm. All you gotta do get a contract, mm-hmm. and you gotta do two pieces of content a week. Mm-hmm. Now you get that money as the owner. Do what the record labels do to us. That literally, like, if, if bro, we know how the game go. I know. I'm not paying you fifty. I'm not paying you a million unless I'm making fifty million. So I'm thinking. No, listen. Why not pay them? We and, and and we have tested that before, and what happens is that the artists typically don't follow through. And you got contracts and everything. Yes, they don't care. They're not. They run off on the plug. I'm telling you, and this is what bugs me out. When I saw Bad Baby, as a matter of fact, I just seen a video the other day since she's been on OnlyFans. You know how much money she's made on OnlyFans since she's been on there? Like 75? It's like 50, $53 million. Crazy. 
So wait, if she can make fifty three million dollars, yeah, she made that. She she brought in seventy seven or something. Yeah, she, like that. yeah, she brought in seventy seven, but <sighs> took home fifty three mil m's. Guess who that's more money than? Mm, mm, mm. She made more than money than Lotto. That's more money than Sexy Red. That's more money than Doja Cat. That's more money than Megan Thee Stallion. It might be more money than Cardi B. I'm not gonna say Nicki because Nicki been in the game, but and all of those girls are better rappers than she is. But my point is, if you don't explicitly decide to monetize your brand, you're leaving hundreds of millions of dollars on the table. Forget the music. The music is always there for you to do. Do your music, do your shows. But your brand, like a matter of fact, I seen this the other day. I saw this, I screenshot this, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I screenshot this because I was going to send it to her manager, or not her manager, but one of the people that work with her. Let me find this little screenshot. Because I, really, I literally screenshot this the other day, and I was like, are you serious? Hold on. I hope it's Why are you looking phone. for that? I say that because like it's so many creatives out here struggling. And if you pay a creative a salary, I'm pretty sure if you if you got access, because I'm doing this with a, a company now, right? They they access access for my for my YouTube so mm -hmm. they can give me a quote, right? Mm -hmm. You get access to their YouTube, you see how much money they made, right? Mm -hmm. You can offer them a percentage of their salary guaranteed. Because mm -hmm. YouTube ain't guaranteed. Like y'all give you this guarantee. Mm -hmm. We write up a contract. All you gotta do is give me exclusive content. I'm listen. And what happens is that people don't, what people want to see is instant results. But if it's a contract. It's like a job at that point. No, you got to do that. But my point is a lot of times people want to see instant results. I've had, I've had creators come on fan base like I'm coming to fan base. And they post something and immediately it, they don't get the same attention. But are you paying them is what I'm saying. Listen, listen, what I'm saying some, some, listen, listen. Number one, if you get in the business of paying creators, then you have to pay everybody. You can't start that. Because mm. that's what happened with Amp. I'm telling you, pay, Amp did it. Why? So tell me this, Amp, all those people. If you take, you take, Joe Budden, Jason Lee, uh, Nicki Minaj, Young Boy, Candy, who, and all of them couldn't get people to come on there and and make that and subscribe and make money. It don't work. Mm -hmm. Community. I'm telling you, community is what builds these platforms. And I know that these creators aren't being respected because I talk to their managers. I talk to the managers of these people that work with TikTok and work with Instagram and work with uh, 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 Twitch. And they be like, man, they be disrespecting the F out of us. They don't care. They don't respect. And the reason why is because there's nobody. They don't. They they know that they the only game in town. Mm. The minute that I tell you, the minute that somebody go, people are making money on fan base. Don't get it twisted. People making $11,000, $5,000. Like, there people making money on fan base, right? But my point is when somebody says, I made an M, Cause it's not, I mean, eleven thousand dollars is not a lot to a rapper mm. that's making money, that's doing fifty thousand, hundred thousand dollar walkthroughs. They don't care about that. But when, but as soon as that person hits that M or two M on fan base, then they all gonna come over, and they all gonna rush over. Cause you got to start from the bottom up. So you start with nano influencers, nano creators. You would be the best case use case to get a little baby on there, or even a Joe Button. Because when they see you making five million a year, they be like, well, wait a minute. If Jay making five hundred. He making five million a year. I can make fifty. That's how it happened. Yeah. You start. You start with. And, and My so only I'm, thing is like I'm. I, I downloaded it. It's just why would I leave Patreon? I, I'm trying to understand. So what is? So let's let's have this Patreon conversation. Let's how long it. you been on Patreon? Uh, maybe like six, seven months. All right. So how many how many subscribers you got on Patreon? Let's look. Um, give me the give me subscribers on Patreon. Yeah, we can run through the whole thing. I'm okay. I have uh 68 members, but. It's weird because some of these are um are free. free. Okay. Yeah, so I, I think I got like, let me. I we can we can we can do this in real life. I'm I'm, I'm transparent. It don't matter. Well, what I, my point is what I'm saying is that whatever you making on Patreon, you can make that on fan base and more money. Let's go through it because I want I want to I want to be a believer and we can hopefully make somebody else a believer. I don't. I'm gonna tell you, but I'm gonna, but but here's the thing. You gotta you gotta utilize the tools. Like, what can you do on Patreon? So I have. 21 paid right now is $71 a month. All right, cool. Hold on. Look at this. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right, I'm about to show you this. I'm about to, I'm about to wow you out. You ready? Mm -hmm. Here you go. I'm on fan base right now. Number one, look. Here's where all my exclusive content gets posted. That's where I post all my exclusive content. I, am po I don't post none. Guess how many subscribers I got? I can't see. Tell 12. Me. 12. Right? Now I go to my revenue that I can see in real time. Guess how much money I made half a month through? 70, 
$47. $47. I'm already beating you. I'm going to beat you by the end of the month. I ain't, I ain't, I don't even post no exclusive content. I'm not even doing I'm just getting, I'm getting this from love. You know, people can tip your, and yeah. in, in tip. So I made money from love. I get money from love and subscriptions. I get tips and subscriptions. And I got followers. I got, how many followers? I got a hundred, I got 104,000 followers on fan base. So I can get, so let's say I go to fan base, right? Mm -hmm. I say it's kind of like this. We see La Russell do this. This um, we seen Nipsey Hussle was the, the famous person that did it. Um, I think it was Nipsey, but basically like choose your own price. Yeah, you can do that. So let's say I come to fan base, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't charge nothing for my subscription, but I say, give me pay pay what you think is worth. No, don't you don't do that. Just have followers, and then still put other stuff behind a paywall. Just give them the free, mm -hmm. and then you'll still, like you're doing on Patreon. There's more. There's more for people to do on Fanbase and Patreon. That's why you have so little subscribers because it's like once they look at your content, they're like, "What are we doing?" Mm -hmm. Once I go look at the naked girl on OnlyFans, is there anything else to see on OnlyFans? Mm -hmm. Is there a meme, a funny video, some news going on, a, a long form video, some something that I can make myself that I can share with my friends? You can't do that. We got DMs. We got stories live, short form video, long form but that's video. Instagram. You can no. make subscriptions on Instagram. Yeah, I know. But again, they the old boy. They old. They old. But you know, in this society, it's like, bro, like we don't like nothing that's new. Like it's like yeah, it's different. Do. It's different for us. Anything that's that's different for what we neglect. Like we we. It's like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like as as an extra app for my, me. My my little brother is 18 years old. You want to see what his family? You want to see what his Instagram page looks like? He 18. He ain't on Instagram. Mm. He's, I, he's, he's not. Want to know why he's not? Because I'm there. And my point is, there are millions and millions of kids that are between the ages of 17 and 28 that do not want to be around big sister or their grandma or their mom or dad. And they want to go in there and do their dance videos and talk about rap shit and talk about getting drunk and having fun and living life. And all those things, and they don't want to do it. So he's out of here. No way. Mm. He ain't doing that. And nothing's going to stop that. There's always going to be another platform. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just here. Like it's on. Like, I'm just down the. I'm just down the tracks. I'm like, y'all will get here. It, when it happens, it's gonna happen. When it happens, it's gonna look like it's overnight. Mm. It's gonna look like fan base, the number one app on the app store. Da, 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 da. And it's like, yeah, I started this company in 2018. Launched in 2019, didn't tell nobody. I built it for two years, raised money at the end of 2020, raised three million, then another two million, then another 4.5, raised 10 million. Now I'm launching, launching 17 million out around. We're gonna raise that money, and then somebody gonna come on the platform and blow it up, like Snoop did for Instagram. Because typically, what happens with these platforms is, it's one celebrity that just gets on there and uses the platform, right, and blows it up and understands what's going on. My thing is that so many people don't see the value in their content. This costs money. This isn't free. You ain't got to tell this me. This electricity, this cameras, this lights. All right. So And that's why we're here because it ain't free. So listen. So listen to what I'm saying, though. That's it. So then, so how many seasons of this podcast are you on? I don't do seasons, but I got, bro, I don't, let's just say I got over a thousand videos on my YouTube. So how, how long you been doing this? Podcasting since like 2019. Okay. So you in, so then we say you in season four or five, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So it's time to, it's time to up the ante, right? Mm -hmm. So in season six. Right, you're like, oh, I do. I, I'm gonna start paying on my content and build a subscriber base of loyal people mm -hmm. that really want to support me. Because here's the thing, you don't understand. People want to see you win. I want to see you win. People want to subscribe to you. You just don't. You don't know. More people want to subscribe to you than you think, right? Mm -hmm. And it might be how much you charge, right? Because how much you charge for a subscription? Three dollars. Okay, yeah. That's even. Yeah, you, that's that's perfect. So yeah, three three four nine. A price of a bag of chips and a soda. Don't go above four ninety nine. But you got. But here's another thing: you got to ma massively market and promote that. Mm -hmm. You can't just say, "Oh, come subscribe to my page," and then that's it. Like yeah. this is the one. This is the thing that doesn't. Okay, so let me ask you a question. We know that the girls on OnlyFans get butt ass naked, right? Mm -hmm. We know that, right? But what do they always do? What three words is it? What three words does every OnlyFans model post, say, put on their stories, put on Twitter? Link in bio, link yeah, in bio, yeah. link in bio, swipe mm -hmm. up, link yeah, in bio, yeah. link in bio. Yeah. They're, they're marketing 24 seven. We know they naked and they still marketing. Yeah. They right. still, so you see, and a lot of people don't have that energy. They don't, they're not going to sit up there and do that. You're right. Every story that they're like, here's the thing. We're going to get you on fan base. You should never post a story that doesn't say 
swipe up to subscribe to my fan base. Nothing. Every single thing you should do. Every I don't care if you just out chilling at the mall, there should still be a link to subscribe. Everything you do should have a you should be spending every 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 ounce of real estate you have on social media, whether it's YouTube, whether it's X, whether it's TikTok, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Facebook, should be driving. It's called funneling. Mm. You gotta funnel people. 100%. Like when Bad Baby made that money, right? To explain to you when Bad Baby made that money, and she probably did it again, because I always go to her page. But yeah, look, the first time I saw Bad Baby, look, she not on Instagram. What is she don't you everybody, but why why is why is Cardi B on there so hard? Mm. She's made more money not using Instagram with less followers than these artists that have million because everybody caught up in the they caught up in the attention. Yeah, you're right. The bag. Is in subscriptions. This girl made $54 million. She has 16 million followers on Instagram and don't give a shit about Instagram. See, this is the difference. She knows she makes Instagram. We think Instagram makes us. Facts. So when Boosie get kicked off Instagram, give me my Instagram page back, please. When somebody go, oh, please give my page back. Oh my God, they're shadow banning me. We, we're, we're programmed to try to fight to be in spaces we're not wanted. We got an acceptance issue. That's it's crazy. the velvet rope mentality. We don't want you niggas here. Let us in. I want my page back. Mm. I want my no. Okay, bye. We going to fan base, and I'm investing, and we finna run this shit up to a hundred billion and cash out, and we all finna be on islands and private jets, and we ain't finna rock with y'all. Like it's over with. I like this. Nah, this is fire. I'm a, I'm I'm on there, bro. <laughs> no, it's not being, but being on there and being present are two entirely different no, I'm a, things. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, Have you migrated your content? Mm -mm. I filed a patent for that. You know what mm. content migration is? Yeah, you told me. Before. Yeah, so you can migrate your TikTok. Or your Instagram and take all that content and move it over to fan base. Mm. Yeah. You know, just content, just take it and ships it all over like FedEx and it winds up on your page. So all your captions, all your video, up to 1,000 posts wind up on your fan base page with TikTok and Instagram. And I filed a patent for that. I filed a patent for branded audio. Like you can listen to the audio rooms, like I just showed you. You, look, you can listen to audio rooms on fan base without even having to download the app. Mm. That means if, if I'm an artist, I can create an audio room on Fanbase and just put the link in my Instagram story or tweet out the link and then people can listen to it without even, and you still getting the audience, you still getting the attention you want without even having to download the app. I filed a patent for that. I filed a patent for, I'm I, filed a patent now, for like... I filed a patent for the subscriptions. Listen, I'm gonna tell you one thing about me. Like, I'm a believer. I'm a very, I'm a, like, Fanbase is going to be a multi billion dollar platform. I say this, like, I'm a, like, because I know the fastest way to build wealth in America or in the world right now is what? Tech. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tech is, yeah. Okay, so then what makes tech cool? Black people. So when you take black people in tech and put it under one, listen, one domain, somebody's over the whole thing, not prime example. Oh, man. Bro, I'm looking at this. Prime, prime example, right? Prime example. Social media has changed now, right? Before it was cool, I literally saw a video of the Instagram CEO with these guys named, um, um, I can't think of it. I think they have a podcast. They interviewed the, uh, the CEO of Instagram. Some, um, you're not talking about um, um, white guys. They got Colin beer? and Samir. Okay, okay. Colin and Samir. The first thing they sat down with and talked about the Instagram CEO with is the fact of how cool he dresses. You know what he had on? He had on a T-shirt. And a chain and some jeans. <laughs> You're cool. Now Mark Zuckerberg's doing it. Now Mark Zuckerberg's wearing cool ass t-shirts and chains. Cause it's not cool to be the CEO with flip flops and a, and a hoodie on. And no, nah, now the the video, the culture's involved. We already cool. This they trying to look like you, and they got and they already got hundred billion dollar company. They still trying to look like us. Mm. That's the thing that's crazy to me. It's like yo, it's it's it. it, it and the thing about this is, and what what I want to say to you and 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 all the people watching is not. It's like this. It's not like this is a selfish goal for myself. I we literally have over fifteen thousand investors that are invested in fan base. We could take fifteen thousand more mm. and raise. 17, and my point is, of those fifteen thousand, the value of the company is going to continue to go up. I'm telling you, look. I, I just say, look. Don't be mad. When fan base go public or somebody acquires and everybody's like, yo, I can't believe I didn't invest in that. Like, I, I didn't believe. I, I but here's the, the thing. That's always the story, though. Always. How many people you think really believe Kanye was going to make Yeezys? How many people mm -hmm. thought Kanye was even going to rap? 
Facts. Yep. They told him he couldn't rap. Right. They told him not to rap. You're not a rapper. Him, you can't do design and stuff. You can't, yeah, you can't design clothes. Don't do this church stuff, man. Now, right. Yeah. And every time he did it. <sighs> yeah. And, 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 and that's what my point is. That's what it always is. If it was easy, right? Every if, if fan base was easy, everybody would do it. It would have mm -hmm. been done already. This is one thing I know why it's hard. Black Planet was founded in like 2000. It's 2024. So between 2000 and the year 2024, I know for certain that there are thousands and thousands of black people that are smarter than me and have way more money than I do. So how come none of them have built a successful social media platform? Because mm. this shit is hard. There's an there's a understanding and attention to detail and an understanding of psychology, culture, technology that's all wrapped up in this that you do. Because if not, everybody could do it. Soulja Boy would already did it. Because mm. Soulja Boy does everything first. <laughs> to the point that to the point that the platform that Kai Sinat is on, Soulja Boy blew that up. Mm. You know, you know the reason that Twitch exists is because of Soulja Boy and Bow Wow. You know that. Mm -mm. You you don't remember? You remember Ustream? Yeah, I remember Ustream. You remember Justin TV? I don't remember you, that. You remember Justin that TV? And so Justin that TV came along and blown up real big, and they said, you know what? We're gonna make a video game streaming division. It was called Twitch. Blew up, shut down Justin TV, sold to Amazon for $3 billion. Damn. But Soldier Boy and Bow Wow are the ones that blew up Justin TV. Now imagine if they own equity in Justin TV and then they made Twitch and then Twitch gets bought for $3 billion. And Soldier Boy and them had a little piece of the company. They would have made $30, $40, 50 $100 million, $300 million off that thing. That is my point is this is the, this is, I'm telling you, this is the easiest legal flip of all time. Mm. It's legal. I can tell you right now as a businessman, what makes the, what gives, what gives, what gives an app its value? People. Okay, cool. So if Fanbase has 10 million users, it's probably like a $5 billion app. But guess what? It's not right now. It's worth $160 million. But guess what you can do right now? You can go buy stock in Fanbase and then bring your people over to there and make it a $5 billion app. Mm. What's stopping anybody from doing that? I'm, I'm telling you that the, the, the conversation of collaboration and building wealth can no longer be competition. Mm. It's too many of us competing to be the only billionaire. I'm not, I look, I don't know how, I don't know what, I'm not, I, mean, I don't count nobody's paper, I don't know nobody's intentions, but I know there could be way more, we only have 10 black billionaires in the United States of America. I know we could have way more than that. Mm. We could easily have way more than that. And the fastest way to do that is them first 10 could help you do it. Mm. I'm not saying that they aren't, but them 10 could make another 100 if they wanted to. You don't think so? No, I know so. Right. You don't think they could all take like 10, 15, 20 million dollars, put it into a pot, start a, start a venture fund, and then fund all these black businesses? I know so. Right. Mm. But that's what the other guys do. That's why they call the PayPal... Peter Thiel and all them and 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 uh, Elon, all them, Jack Doors, all them own part of each other's company. They all that's what they do. Why are we not doing that? Cause we so we so new to the wealth. We want we want to we want to get rich and go hang out at Michael Rubin parties. No shade to Michael Rubin, I don't even know him, but I want to know when is the Juneteenth all black party at Tyler Perry's house with all the black billionaires? When is that party? I want to go to that party. I don't want to go to the Hamptons with Michael Rubin and all them people and just hang out with, you know, Robert Kraft, who's a Trump supporter, and all these people and all these other people that don't. I want to go, where, where, where's, where, where are we swag surfing at? Where we really feel like we can really be, a, and it's our paper. Like, where are we at? Like, I don't want to, I'm, that's, why, that's why I say I ain't leaving Atlanta. Bro, this is fire, bro. You got me thinking about, this is fire. This I'm, here is to fire. I'm here to change the minds and the perspectives of young people and people that watch this because, you got to understand how important this is. This is generational wealth we're talking about. This is like this is like you know we don't have so you know how like okay I'll give you a prime example. X. Elon Musk. Elon Musk has been saying racist shit for the last year since he got X. He been slowly. Slowly, slowly edging, talking about the election and yeah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. And we knew it was coming. Guess what Elon Musk did yesterday? What? Two days ago, he said, I'm creating 
a super PAC for Donald Trump, and I'm going to donate $45 million a month to his campaign. What the? F yeah. You want to know why? Because Elon Musk is worth hundreds of billions of dollars. So my point is this. We don't have no... The richest black billionaire, I think, in the country is worth like $16 billion. I think Oprah might... I, yeah, it might be like, it might be like 15, 15, 16 billion. The, the richest black billionaire in the United States of America. Might be 16 billion. When Michael Bloomberg ran for president in 2020, you know how much money he spent on commercials and lost a billion dollars. Google it. Google, Google, how much money did Michael Bloomberg spend on commercials to run for president? It's going to say a billion dollars. That's the kind of money I want. I want to be able to spend a billion on commercials and not even think about it. I want to be, I want to be able to be like Elon Musk. I want to be able to spend $45 million to help the next black mayor of Atlanta and the next black governor and the next black president be president. See, that's what, the, that's what this money is for. Elon's taking that money so he can change laws to benefit him. That's what this all is about. If you ain't getting rich to change the law, that's what Atlanta was built off of. Atlanta exists like, where are you from? I'm from Baltimore. Okay, cool. I know this, I know, I know Atlanta feel a lot different than Baltimore. Yeah. Way different. Because you see, you when you see this money, it's like Yeah, it's, it's way different. It's it's, it's 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 black people with money it's, down here. It's funny because like your experience, I experienced the opposite. Like people in Atlanta, I feel like they give away the game. But yeah. I was just talking about this. I was like, I think what happens is in Atlanta is it is so much money. So if you're from Baltimore in Atlanta, they can give you the scraps and it's still better than what you used to. Like here, they probably still wouldn't give you enough to pass them, like you're saying. I would. But I'm saying, like, you said like most people in general. Listen, I know for I know, listen, I know for certain that. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna leave names out, but there are black businessmen in the music industry that I've known for at least 20 years that invested in a competitor to fan base and not fan base. And that competitor is out of business. Mm. And the CEO and founders of those companies were white people. So you put your money in the hands of these white tech founders and not a black dude that you know, and you lost your money. Mm. And we still here. Oh, I'm gonna, look, I'm 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 gonna be I'm gonna be on my on the the confidence that I have the confidence of Kanye. I don't have the temperament, but I definitely got the confidence. Mm. Mark my words, everybody that thinks that fan base not about to be it's gonna be the biggest thing you ever saw. You'd be like, yo, you'd be like, I remember when Isaac was sitting right here in this chair. I remember when Isaac was walking around with his fan base t shirt on and telling people to invest and da 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 da. The same way that Kanye used to walk around with his tapes on a backpack or talk about his shoes. Or anybody that has a dream or idea that nobody believes in. Because nobody believes in your ideas. Ain't nobody, again, people ain't believing you. Nah, they didn't. Right. I say that all it's, the time. It's part of the journey. It's, but my point is, it's supposed to be that way. Because mm. it, it builds character. It, 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 it makes you who you are. It gives you that fire and that confidence to keep going. You got to be tough or you'll give up. You're like, man, I give up, man. Da -da 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 -da. It's all good. Nah, man. Nah, this is fire, bro. Man, this is fire. Sheesh, you dropped a mad game. Yo, hop on fan base right now. Like, we got to <laughs> hop on fan base. I got to get some followers, man. Follow me. I got the same username, Mr. Underscore J Hill. Did you migrate your content? Nah, not yet. Send me a screenshot of your page. Okay. And I'll do it myself. All right, I'm gonna send I'll migrate you from Instagram over. All and right. then hop in some audio. You know how to, like, these kind of conversations, we should take, like, when you do a podcast, you should, like, have this and do an extra one like an audio room on fan base after the podcast. Because you know you can charge people to even be in your audio rooms. You can have subscriber-based audio rooms. So they can't even get in the room without subscribing to be in the room. Bro, so I'm, I'm, so I'm going to be hitting you, bro. So the real I'm, game, listen, I'm going to tell you, the people that wind up doing it are not, listen, here's the thing about. Listen, I'm going to hit you. When I need your help, so don't. Here's the thing about rich folks. Rich folks are too rich. They too rich. They be thinking they know everything. And they don't understand, and they don't understand, they don't read the room. They don't understand the moves that they make are not the moves to make. And this is, again, I, I respect Swiss Beats and Versus more than anything in the world. But it looks crazy that Elon Musk is donating $45 million to a Trump super PAC, and you just did a deal with him. Mm. And that's not taking a shot at them. That just looks crazy. Because Elon Musk will say stuff like, we need to get rid of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Google it. Again, everything that I say, research and see if Elon Musk says we need to get rid of diversity, equity, inclusion for black people. Right? We need to do that. 
or you can rig an election like the election was rigged when we know it wasn't. Everything that he, all these little racist tropes that he gets into and does, and 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 we rather be over there than fan base. Again, listen, I, like I said. It's bro, cool. you got my support, bro. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm thinking of ways. I'm, I was looking at it. I'm thinking of ways of how I can like. Are you invested? That's a conversation for another time. No, it ain't. That's a conversation for right now. The minimum to invest in fan base is three hundred and ninety nine dollars. To buy some shit, you get sixty shares of fan base stock for three hundred ninety nine dollars at six sixty five a share at one hundred sixty million dollar valuation right now. I, I keep telling. Look. I'm looking. I'm over my phone right now. I, I, I ain't got that much electricity I, left. I, I, uh, where I'm, we at, Kyra? Look at this. I'm raising seventeen million dollars. I've already raised. What's that number? Read that number. How much have I raised already in this new round? This is a new round. How much have I already raised in this new round? Damn. Read the number. It's one million. Uh huh. Seven hundred sixty-four thousand. Right. And five hundred seventy-eight dollars and thirty-two cents. Right. And I'm raising seventeen million. So there's still room. For all y'all to get in there. And the minimum to invest in fan base is $399. I'm raising 17 million. Here's the thing that's crazy. There's 40 million black people in the United States of America. 40 million. No, 48 million. I'm sorry. I say I get it wrong. 48 million black people in the United States of America. I did this when we was at Podcast Summit. I'm raising $17 million. All I need is for 28,500 people to invest $600 and that's seventeen million one hundred thousand dollars out of forty eight million black people in the United States of America. Can we find twenty eight thousand five hundred people to invest six hundred dollars, and let's raise the seventeen million and get up out of here? Because listen, I built. You know how much money like, you know how much money Clubhouse has raised. I think you said it. No, they no they raised a hundred million at a billion in total. They've raised three hundred million. Damn. At three hundred million at a four billion dollar valuation. 300 million. There was an app called Fan House. Yeah, I remember you saying that. They raised $35 million out the gate. They already had a business. They spent their money 18 months. They gone. Do you know what I would do with $35 million? I've raised 10 so far, and it's been spread out over three or four years. You know what I would do with $35 million? You know what I'm going to do with $17 million? You ain't, bruh, I, sh- I, ch- I, ch- I, played st- I played the music. You see how Facebook took the song? Mm-hmm. I showed you that at the, at the theme. I, my, my, like, yo, those are the things that I talk about. Like, we they, it's an audio room on Fanbase right now. Look, this just like Clubhouse. Right. Like, so it's not going to be, you know, again. Uh, and look, I'm finna lead the room. I'm finna lead the app and lead the room. I'm finna go on the internet. And I'm finna post the same link to the audio room on the web. Look, same room without even having to download the app. Look, listen. It's only going to get better. That's hard the right there. Look. Um, so, on the web without even having to download Can you da- close that web? Huh? Can you close that web and listen? Oh, yeah. You mean a swipe up? Yeah. You can do that. Hold on. Because I'm wondering if you could like still use your phone. I think you can. But what's important is you know, we'll be moving from there, but I do want to that. launch this program. You don't have to even uh, download the app to listen. Right. Within a month. Like, well, you know, I'm yeah. saying like people can multitask. Right. Yeah. You, can, you just set your phone down. I know what you mean. You want to continue to Yeah. But see, but see, look, let's I can build that. That ain't nothing. We build audio rooms. So that's fine. Want, no, I like if this. I want to join the room. If I if, if, if I join the room, look, it's gonna take me back to the room. It's gonna take me into the room. Oh no, that's hard. Look, and it, look, and marketing team Q&A. Bro, this hard, bro. We got to go. We got to go. We got to wrap this up. So this listen. Is, that's so, hard. So this, so this is my, this my, this, this my call to everybody. My request. Just, just to check this out. Go to startengine.com slash fan base to invest in fan base. Just look at it. You go check it out. The minimum to invest is $399. Your own part, of, especially young people. Most of the people that invest in fan base don't even use it. Mm. I want I want young people to invest in it and use it. You know people that you know how many people have invested in fan base, got on fan base, used fan base, made the money back by using fan base that they invested and they, now they own part of the company for free. Mm. I can run off a dozen, two dozen, three dozen people that have already made three hundred ninety nine dollars just by using the app. 
Go to startengine.com slash fan base, invest in fan base, download the app. It's free to download, free to use. Make a profile, migrate your content from Instagram and TikTok. You're going to do the same thing. We, when we're it. done with this, I'm going to get you set up. I'm going to go grab my laptop and migrate your content in, in front of your face. You'll be like, wow. Let's do it, man. I want you to see it. Let's do it, bro. This is good, man. Isaac Hayes the third. Yes, sir. Uh, J Hill, Mr. J Hill Podcast. Sheesh. If this is a million dollars worth of game right here. No, it was a hundred billion dollars worth of game. A hundred billion dollars worth of game. We out. It's a wrap. Yep. <laughs>